We are going to discuss the DC biasing of different configurations in a bipolar junction transistor. Uh, there are a lot of things that we should consider and know before going into the uh, solving of circuit configurations of a BJT. And one of it is the definition. Uh, biasing, as we have discussed in the semiconductor diode, is the process of applying DC voltages to the component. And for this matter, we are applying DC voltage to the transistor and able for it to turn on and perform its function as an amplifier. And the thing that is being amplified is usually an AC signal that is being uh, inputted into the transistor. The DC bias also improves the AC power in the output side of the amplifier because there is a transfer of energy from the applied DC supplies to the output of the circuit. There are several types of configurations in a BJT circuit analysis. The most common one is the fixed bias, and that is the one that we will be demonstrating for this video. To solve for different configurations, there are steps that we, we should follow. The first one is to set the capacitor to infinity and thus giving an equivalent of an open switch. Because we are dealing with DC biasing, the capacitor will be considered as open because it does not uh, conduct and it does not allow DC voltages and currents to pass through it. The second step is to make an equation by a looping. And this is usually done by KVL. The third one is to solve for IB and IC. So why is it IB and IC? Because IB is usually the one that is on the input side and IC on the output. And lastly, we have to solve for the unknown parameters. So let's get into the example of a fixed bias configuration. This is the fixed bias configuration. So as you can see, uh, the input is on the base, and the base is connected to an RB, which is connected to a VCC, or that's the voltage uh, DC source. And also, the emitter is directly connected to the ground, and there are no RE to be found. And lastly, on the output side of the transistor amplifier, we have the RC and a capacitor for the output. So, let's start solving this one, and let's start by equating the value of the capacitance or the capacitor into infinity. So, let's just um, consider uh, disregarding this part right here, because that's the AC part, and also on the output side. So, let's just focus on the DC part of the circuit. So, the first thing that we have to solve is the IB. So to solve for that, we have to do a loop from the voltage source right here and then going to the ground through the VBE. So let's do that. Uh, we have uh, 12 volts of the VCC minus uh, IBRB, that's the voltage drop across the 240 kilo ohms resistor, that's 240k ohms multiplied by the current IB. Take note that the subscripts in all of these uh, sol solutions are in capital letters. Take note that when we have capital letters that, that, um, that determines or that indicates that the currents or voltages and other components are in DC. When you are um, 
solving and you have encountered a subscript of a lower case letters, then that is an AC quantity. So going back to the solution, after going through the RB, we have to cross the VBE junction. And the VBE has an equivalent voltage drop of 0.7 volts and then down to zero. So this is equivalent to zero. So the only unknown on the equation is IB. Therefore, IB is equivalent to equivalent to 4.708333 times 10 to the negative 5 amperes. So after solving IB, we can solve IC by doing a very simple step. As you can see here that the beta is given, that's 50. And there is a relationship between IB and IC. Remember that beta is equivalent to IC over IB. And therefore, our IC is equivalent to beta, which is 50 multiplied by the value of IB. And IC is equivalent to 2.3541.67 times 10 to the negative 3 amperes. The next unknown that we will be solving is the VCE. So VCE is on the output side of the circuit. So let's do a loop from the VCC down, down to the ground. So that is 12 volts minus ICRC, that's 2.2 kilo ohms multiplied by the IC minus the uh, CE junction, that's the VCE, and that is equivalent to zero. IC is already known from the previous step. Therefore, our VCE is equivalent to 6.820833 volts. The next thing here that we have to solve is the VB. The VB is the voltage drop when we try to measure this part right here on the base and then our negative probe of our tester is on the ground. So when we uh, do a KVL starting from the base right here, all we can measure is the uh, VBE in the BE junction. So when we are going to measure it through a voltmeter, the value that we can uh, measure from it is just the BE junction voltage drop. So that's equivalent to 0.7 volts. The next unknown that we have to solve is VE. VE is the voltage that we can measure if we measure it from the emitter and then the other probe of the voltmeter is to the ground. And by simply uh, analyzing the circuit, it is obvious that VE is connected to the ground, therefore VE is zero volts. In addition, uh, VC. VC is measured from here down to the ground. And similar to the VB, we can only measure the voltage drop across the CE junction, therefore, our VC is equivalent to VCE, which is equivalent to point, uh, 6.820833 volts. And lastly, the VBC. So VBC. VBC is equivalent to VB minus VC. So this is... Uh, 0.7 
minus 6.820833 volts. Our VBC is equivalent to negative 6.120833 volts. The equation that I, I used for this one is the subscript notation. When we have uh, two subscript here, for example, the V, B, and C, this is equivalent to the VB, the first subscript, uh, being subtracted by the VC, the second one. So this, is, uh, this could also be applied for any other voltages. For example, VBE is equal to VB minus VE. And then to, um, to prove this, our VB is 0 0.7 for this particular problem and our VE is 0. So therefore, our VBE is still 0 0.7 volts.